today's plan was to bug proof my squash and zucchini. However, I'm not exactly sure that now is the right time to do it. I have to do a little bit of research. Somewhere I saw that the squash borers like to come up in June. I'm just getting nervous as it's getting warmer, even though we just had a cold snap. <laughs> um, but I'm getting nervous that I'll miss it and we'll end up with these evil, wretched little creatures, which if any of you have ever dealt with them, they are, they start as an egg and they hatch and burrow into the squash and zucchini and effectively eat it out so that it can no longer get any water or nutrients. And your squash and zucchini will look beautiful one day and then all of a sudden they're all limp and dead. <laughs> and it happens pretty quickly. It's really hard to stop. Um, I've tried methods of, um, I've tried methods of cutting them open and getting their larva out and burying the stems. I, I've tried so many things. So anyway, I came out today thinking I was going to do this and I called my dad who is my resident expert on plants and I think we decided that it might be just a hair early. However, I will turn this around and show you the things I was thinking about trying uh, in case you want to start thinking about how you want to look at, at this problem or, or preventing this problem as well. Um, so let me, let me flip this guy around. So my squash and zucchini is really looking great. This has been in a very short amount of time, three weeks maybe. And every day I come out and I feel like it has just about doubled in size. That's an exaggeration, but it, it, sometimes I wonder, like this one here, whew, is he big? He's gotten big. Um, I'm also beginning to see fruit. Uh, I've got over here, you can see the, oh, let's see, doing this, this camera's a little tough. This is the beginnings of a zucchini right here. So this is a female flower because the fruit is attached to it there. If it if it doesn't have that on the end, I think that it's a male. Actually, this one's hard to tell. I thought because of the way that's shaped that that might be, I don't know, that could be the stem. It's easier to tell with the squash. And I have one that has the fruit as well, although I put a cup on it because that's part of what I'm thinking about doing. Ah, uh, can you see? Ah, here it is, let's see. Right there, see that little yellow squash? That's a baby yellow squash. And so he's hanging out in there and I'm really excited to see that already. And <laughs> the methods that I've seen for this in order to protect against the bugs vary. I've seen new techniques where they trellis these in order to grow them in smaller spaces and I'm debating on whether or not I want to try that. I always get a little scared when it comes to pruning and manipulating my plants because I'm afraid of killing them. Um, however, usually having a little bit of airflow and pulling them up off the ground, that's, that's usually a good thing. It stops some of the disease and some of the things that tend to get them. Um, this application is one of the most typical. I went ahead and cut some strips of foil and I did it only on this one for now but that is a uh, covering so that the moth, the borer moth, it looks kind of like a wasp. It is a day flying moth and it comes and it flies in here and it lays eggs down on the base. Um, I can effectively come out every single day and look for the eggs. They're not that hard to spot, but if you miss them, uh, it doesn't take long. I think I, I think I read online that really from the time they lay the eggs to the time they burrow in is maybe four or five days. So a little less than a week. And, uh, I just don't want to even have to worry. I, I want to make sure they're taken care of. So this is one method I may try. I feel like I've done this before and it didn't work, um, but I'm willing to try it again. I, I've seen varied success on this, so um, I've done what I can to kind of cover the spaces. I'm, I'm nervous because there's little flowers in there, which 
I'll be honest, if, I think if you lose a couple flowers, it's okay. It's in a stage where it grows pretty quickly. The other thing I thought I would try is this. Now, right now, the reason I stopped is because I'm afraid that all the flowers and all the growth is too far inside that cup. And I don't know that it will grow out of the cup enough for the pollinators to get at it. Now, I do have some ants and things in here that might help. Um, but normally, you know, you want your, your bees and your little butterflies and whatnot to get in there. Um, I'm not sure that they can, you know, yes, this may stop the borer from get, the borer wasp or whatever it's called from getting in there, but, um, or the moth, I should call it a moth. It's a moth. Um, I don't know if this will stop them from getting in there or not. It seemed like a good plan to me. Um, all I did was cut off the bottom and then I sliced up the side and I put a piece of tape just to hold it back together and I twisted it down into the dirt a little bit to create a barrier and then brought all of the wood chips back up, you know, to protect it. Um, same over here, making sure those wood chips are, the wood chips I think are gonna be my friend this year. I've never done them before and I think this is gonna be a really good way to combat this issue. So I did one more cup over here. That's the one that has the baby squash. So I don't know for now, we'll, uh, we'll leave it. We're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna go inside, do a little more research just to see what might be, um, might be said about this. I've seen videos where they take like smaller, almost Dixie cups um, and do this and it, and, it's, and it looks like it works. So I don't know if these are, are too big though. That's what I worry about is if they're, they're, they're too big for this, this to work right now when they're a little bit young. So more research to come on that. Um, while I'm out here though, I just also found out that I have my first peppers coming. So this is exciting always for me. But I looked over and check this out. I've already got some peppers. This this guy's tiny. He's what, eight inches tall? I don't know if you can see my hand. That is not a very big plant. Um, these were uh, those things that I bought that were called garden salsa peppers. Uh, again, I don't know what they are. My guess is they're kind of like a, um, a cayenne maybe. I mean, they're shaped kind of like that. So, uh, yeah, I, I already have on this little tiny thing. There's four of them. Look at There's one in the front here, this big guy. There's one here. And I got one back here. And then this little tiny guy in the front. So these, if these, you know, survive and do well, I might have a lot coming off of these, <laughs> these few plants. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, normally I get a pretty good crop off of the wax peppers that's what these ones here are that are are starting to flower you see he's coming along um he's taller than the other two uh i usually get a really good crop off those as well as the ones behind that that are my jalapenos i can those those are one of my favorite things to can next to tomatoes because I put them in everything. I, I pickle the, the banana peppers and I put them in salads. You could put them on sandwiches. The jalapenos, I'm a weirdo and I could eat pickled jalapenos straight out of the jar. I love them. Um, so I get plenty of those and uh, I like canning them. So, but yeah, this, this is making me feel really good. I'm, I'm curious what I can, what I can do with these that because they're called something salsa, I'm hoping they'll go in salsa. Um, if they turn red, I do have a chili paste that I make and can can, and those might be perfect for that, you know. Uh, I'll have to see what I can find. I don't know if they called it garden salsa. I mean, because obviously, you know, this is something that the the nursery planted. This is not like a, you know, like a burpee or like this one you see has the, the bonnie, bonnie plants. Um, so I don't know if that was just what they decided to call those. I'm not real sure. I'll, I'll see if I can find out anything. Um, but gosh, I keep coming back over here and looking at my, my squash. It's looking so good. I don't know if that's a baby. That might be a baby one right there. That's a zucchini. 
So I always get so super excited at this point because I just want some squash and zucchini. I grow it every year and every year something happens. So I'm declaring that this year is gonna be my year for a successful crop with these. Um, I want so much zucchini that I'm giving it away and baking breads and finding ways to hide it in like everything because that would be fantastic. Um, and since we're on, you know, our little baby produce, one more thing I'm pretty excited about is my strawberries. Check this out. They're, they're coming in. Now they're little. I, I've read where you're maybe not supposed to pick them the first year. Um, I don't see why you wouldn't. I, I, I think they want you to let it establish its roots. I get that. But if there's fruit sitting there, I, I just... Oh, my heart just can't, I just can't pick it off. I, I know that's probably backward ass thinking, but I just see a strawberry and I get so excited for its fruit that I can't see picking them. I don't know if it truly, truly matters. So we're leaving them for now. Um, but anyway, that's today's garden update. And uh, yeah, we're looking good. Uh, if I do more research and decide to come out and finish putting little cones of shame on my squash you'll be the first to know about it so stay tuned